with the foundation. There are a number of people I'd like to mention today uh, who will be joining us here in the plaquing ceremony. Uh, the first is His Worship Mayor Don Coombs, Mayor of the Town of Harbor Grace. Shane O'Day, uh, former chair of the foundation and uh, an expert in the area of heritage buildings. Uh, other guests joining us for the ceremony, uh, attending the ceremony today include uh, Mr. Bill Frost with the Department of Tourism, Culture and Recreation. David Mills, Director of Historic Resources with the Provincial Government and also a member of the Heritage Foundation Board. Edwina Suli, past chair of the Heritage Foundation. Councillors from the Town of Harbor Grace. Uh, Mr. Aidan Hibbs, Chair of the Heritage Advisory Committee for the Town of Harbor Grace. And of course, all our special invited guests here today. Before we start, I think I'll give you a little background on the Heritage Foundation so you understand what we are trying to do in this province and why we're so pleased to work hand in hand with the town of Harbor Grace to declare the Heritage District here in the town. The foundation uh, was established in 1984 by an act of the provincial legislature. Uh, we began work in 1985 uh, to stimulate an understanding and an appreciation for the architectural heritage of this province, to support and contribute to the preservation and maintenance and restoration uh, of buildings of architectural and historical significance in the province. The foundation has the power to designate buildings and other structures as registered heritage structures, and we also make grants for the purpose of the preservation and restoration of registered heritage structures. We're here today sort of as a first time event uh, because we are fortunate enough now to have our very first heritage district in the whole province, and that is here in Harbor Grace. Working with the late mayor, Paul Moriarty, uh, in April 1993, um, the registered heritage district in Harbor Grace was officially proclaimed by the town. And we're really pleased to be here today. It's quite fitting that we're declaring the heritage district uh, in the town. To, uh, as the very first one because it's, uh, it's, uh, it was also the first town to be incorporated in the province. We're pleased uh, that the placking is taking place on the 50th anniversary of Harbor Grace. Uh, we at the foundation also have a reason to celebrate this year. It's our 10th anniversary, so we're pleased to be able to join in your celebrations. The whole concept of a heritage district, uh, as I said, is a new one for the foundation. Prior to this, we, in we designated individual structures around the province. Um, the district concept came uh, out of uh, some thinking that the foundation had been doing a number of years ago. And after hearing a presentation by uh, Shane O'Day at a municipalities conference, Mayor Paul Moriarty came forward and invited the foundation to work with the town to develop the concept of a heritage district here in the town. So the district, as we have defined it with the town, uh, has the following boundaries. It starts at Point of Beach, goes up Cochrane Street to St. Paul's Church, along the property lines or fence lines on Water Street, to the cathedral, and up to and including the courthouse. The establishment of the district is intended to inform the people of this province of the fine architectural and historical character of this town. To bring us a little background on the concept of, of heritage districts and the development of this particular one, I invite Shane O'Day, former chairperson of the foundation, um, to come and share some thoughts with us. Thank you, Vicki. The Heritage Foundation developed the Heritage District Program because it saw the importance, not just of our old buildings, but also of the cultural landscape in which they sat. And you can understand this if you visualize a heritage building in a major city. It's a building surrounded by high-rise, blocked by cars, a building alone in an alien context. And while by itself it may be important and may give a sense of history to the street, it's a bit like a diamond set in lead. The remarkable thing about a heritage district is that in it you have a sense of context. 
you feel that you're in a place that's been unchanged by time, and that, and this is very important, that you can look on these buildings, you can look on this street, this landscape, in much the same way that your grandparents and your great-grandparents did. Heritage District gives you a bond with your past and lets you take pleasure, lets you take pride in the community your ancestors created. That's why it's crucial then that attention has to be paid to historic detail in all these buildings, because it, because it is these details that give authenticity to the area. Details like clapboard width, window trim, roof shape, the moldings on a corner board, all affect how we respond to a building. And even if we aren't specialists, if they are wrong, we sense that something is wrong. Those towns throughout North America that benefit most from heritage districts are the ones that have taken the greatest care over these apparently small details. And when tourists go into the museum and look at the old photographs, the old photographs that Mackley developed and Jerome and Pam exhibited, they will see a street unchanged for 70 or 100 or 150 years and know that they truly are walking in the past. But we don't do it just for the tourists and their dollars. We do it for ourselves because we have a pride in our forebears built and the way in which it has lasted. In developing this heritage district, the people of Grace say, as they said so firmly in their refusal to allow the cathedral to be reduced to a box, they say that these things have been built and built here for almost four centuries and that they intend to do so for four centuries or more in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shane. I think it's probably significant also to note that within the Heritage District, we have a, a number of properties that were individually designated by the Foundation, um, and they, uh, they will, uh, you'll see them as you walk through, if you're brave enough to take a walk through the district here, through the one day in the whole week that wasn't sunny, uh, but you're brave enough to come out this afternoon, and we're pleased with that. Um, to date, we've designated about 108 structures. Uh, five are in Harbor Grace, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, Ridley Offices, Ridley Hall, Garrison House, and Ridley House. And four of these are in the boundaries of the district. Other historically significant structures that we recognize um, are St. Paul's Church, Rothsay House, the Customs House, and the Courthouse, and the Jail. I would now call on His Worship, Mayor Don Combs, to bring greetings uh, from the town of Harbor Grace. Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. O'Day, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here today to bring you greetings from my fellow councillors and all residents of her race and to say a special thank you. I guess we're, we're very proud of our district, but also to the people of Harbour Grace. I know there's Mrs. June Hunt here today, Bill Oak, and Mr. French people that years ago had the, the foresight, I guess, to realize that what we had here in Harbour Grace and to try to preserve it. Uh, I read your brochure of interest, uh, Victoria. Today, despite several de devastating fires, Harbour Grace maintains its culture, heritage, and sense of place. This heritage district stands as a tribute to the determination and imagination of the people of Harbour Grace, and that's certainly true. And as a council, we are committed to retaining this heritage district. We're very proud of it, and whatever it takes, we're, we're fully supportive of it. Uh, we had two designations this morning. One was our Otterbury School and a local level, and the other one was the Simmons property just down the road. We're also very proud of that, so hopefully in the years to come we can expand our Heritage District also. 1997 will also mark a big year for Harbour Grace because we've got awarded the Matthew as part of the Cabot celebrations. And I met with uh, George Chalker this morning, and we're, we've asked Mr. Chalker to have a representative on our host committee that we can even expand a little bit further the Heritage District, and we look forward to your continued support and working together. But rest assured, the people of Harbour Grace and the Council of Harbour Grace fully support and endorse this district and whatever else we can do in our town to retain it. Because as I said earlier, if it's gone, it's over. We have to keep it and we have to preserve it. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Your Worship. 
think it's also important to note that uh, buildings within the district have some very mm -hmm. tangible benefits now. That, uh, for example, uh, properties within the district that apply to the foundation and, and are designated as registered heritage structures are eligible to apply to us for a grant of up to $10,000 per structure. In fund, uh, and this would go towards funding restoration work on that property. Of course, historic structures within the district that are not designated by the foundation may also apply to the foundation for up to $5,000 per structure uh, to fund re exterior restoration that will enhance the general character of the Heritage District. In fact, the Foundation believes so strongly in this concept that we've allocated $170,000 in our budget for the district, and we've expended almost $20,000 in grants uh, thus far. At this point, uh, we will be unveiling a temporary plaque. Uh, it took a little bit longer than we anticipated for the plaque to be cast in bronze, so they tell us the plaque is in the mail. We'll be unveiling a mock-up of it this afternoon, and I would invite a number of people to come help me do that. Um, Helen Moriarty, widow of former Mayor Moriarty, if you would come and give us a hand with that, along with uh, the Mayor and uh, Shane O'Day. I'll take a moment to read the plaque for those of you who can see it right away. The plaque reads, first established as a formal colony in 1617, the town of Harbour Grace has one of the strongest historical characters in the province, in part by the richness of its built heritage. Houses such as Ridley Hall and Garrison House are testaments to Harbour Grace's prosperous past. Church architecture, represented by St. Paul's and the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, to the cent centrality of religion in the town. The courthouse and the customs house are visible reminders of the importance of Harbour Grace in the history of this province as a whole. Today, despite several devastating fires, Harbour Grace retains its culture, heritage, and a sense of place. This heritage district stands as a tribute to the determination and imagination of the people of Harbour Grace. In conclusion, I'd like to thank all the people who helped put together today's ceremony that stretches back a number of years for all the people who helped work on the project of designating Heritage District. It includes all the people of Harbour Grace for their input throughout that process at public meetings and consultations. And it includes the staff of the town of Harbour Grace for helping us with the logistics today, as well as the Heritage Foundation's staff. Thank you very much, and I do invite you to join us uh, at about 3 o'clock at Garrison House, where we will actually be designating a property, uh, a registered heritage structure, Garrison House, within the boundaries of the Heritage District. Thank you very much. Afternoon, uh, will be um, the mayor, his worship, uh, Don Coombs of uh, Harbor Grace, and uh, Shane O'Day will give us uh, a few words on the background of the house. And of course, we have also with us uh, one of the owners of the property, Jerry Dick. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, we we, did, we have designated over almost 130 properties around the province, and we're pleased to be here in, in Harbor Grace to to designate within what's now our heritage district. Um, to give a bit of background on this particular property, I'll invite Shane O'Day to speak on the history of Garrison House. I can't exactly tell you the year, but I think it was about five years ago, both June, Pi uh, June Hunt and Wallace Pike got in touch with me at the Heritage Foundation to express their concern about the state of Hampshire Cottage. It's a house I'd known 
quite some time. Mac Lee had brought me over here probably 20, 25 years ago to see it when Miss Godden lived here. And he was constantly trying to quietly remove artifacts in the building over the museum across the way. But that number of years ago, when June and Wallace got in touch with me, the house was steadily falling into real disrepair and was danger in serious danger of being lost. Between Harbour Grace and St. John's, we mounted a campaign to save the building. We enlisted the support of people on both sides of the legislature and received their wholehearted support, both in the Ministry of Tourism and Culture and from the Leader of the Opposition. But it was really the activity of people like Wallace and June in concert with the town of Harbour Grace and then with people like Jerry who were prepared to undertake the preservation of the building that made it possible for us to be here today and to go through what is a quite remarkable restoration. The foundation designated the building because it recognized it as one of a group of buildings that represent the earliest type of permanent building in Newfoundland. And this did not take place until the beginning of the 19th century, when we became secure that the fact that we could buy and sell our land, that our properties could be registered, that made us certain that we could pass our land on to our children. It was only then that we appear to have begun to build permanently. Once in the area of Harbour Grace, Carbonair, Bristol's Hope, Upper Island Cove, once about 15 years ago, there were probably close to 15 of these houses. There are now, by rough calculation, only about four left. So that is why we must preserve as many of them as possible, but particularly to treasure those which represent such a high quality of restoration as this one. Thank you, Shane. I call on His Worship, uh, Mayor Don Coombs, to bring greetings on behalf of Harbour Grace. Thank you very much again, Victoria. Uh, on behalf of the town, we just went through most of the formalities. I'd like to offer congratulations to you, Jerry, on a fantastic job. Deputy Mayor Collins and myself and Councillor Pike just strolled up here and we uh, spoke about two or three years ago when we had the opportunity to come up and the building wasn't the, exactly in the condition it is now and you're being complimented as a businessman and for looking after the heritage of Harbour Grace. Congratulations and best of luck. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I'd like to call on Jerry now to, to share some thoughts with us uh, uh, on the designation of uh, Garrison House, or uh, Hampshire Cottage, as it was once known. Jerry? Thank you, Vicki. Uh, first, I'd like to maybe set the record straight a little bit. There's some confusion between the term Garrison House and Hampshire Cottage. And uh, I think the reference to Hampshire Cottage came from the suggestion that the Hampshire Regiment once uh, supposedly used this building and we discovered fairly recently that Thomas God, a Thomas Godden owned Hampshire Cottage at the bottom of Node Street and we believe it burned down even back as far as the 19th century so the term Garrison House actually came from the suggestion of Paul Moriarty he referred to that that he suggested that that's what people in the community often referred to the house as so hence we we went with the name Garrison House uh, I'd like to thank a number of people and, and groups. Uh, this was a, a major undertaking, as a number of people have alluded to. The building was in pretty rough condition, and uh, I think if, if a number of people in this community hadn't um, made some effort to, to keep this thing from being torn down or, or falling down, it, it would have happened. Uh, in particular, the Heritage Foundation. Uh, I think the, the designation is very important for a building. It gives it some protection. And certainly the granting program, uh, I think it often makes a difference between whether a building gets done properly, gets restored, or whether it merely gets renovated. Uh, also, I'd like to thank George Chalker. He was always there with suggestions or information on suppliers and details and so forth. So I think it's very important work that, that the foundation is doing. I'd also like to thank uh, the town of Harbor Grace and the council. Uh, it was very much a partnership, and, and particularly uh, Paul Moriarty was, was really supportive on this project. And I don't think we could have done this without the support of the town. 
Uh, and there were other groups like ACOA and Human Resource Development that also helped out. So I'd like to thank all of them. Uh, and uh, once we do the official placking, I'd like to welcome everybody to tour the house. And there's some wine and cheese, and please, please stick around. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Your comments uh, were very kind for the foundation, and it reminds me to, to say to people that uh, if you do need information on the foundation, the kinds of programs that we offer, uh, if you need some advice on restoring an older building, we're here to, to help, certainly. Um, George Chalker, our executive director, is at the foundation office, as well as there's a board of volunteers uh, drawn from across the province, appointed by government, to operate the foundation. And there's a wealth of knowledge there in all these people, and we're here at your disposal if you have questions. Uh, concerns about various properties uh, in Harbour Grace or anywhere in the province, in fact. At this point now, I'd ask Shane and the Mayor and uh, Jerry to help us unveil the plaque that will be eventually, and we'll invite Helen to join us as well, uh, Helen Moriarty to help unveil the plaque that will, at one time, when after we've unveiled it, will be installed on the house. The plaque reads, according to the folk history of Harbour Grace, this structure, one of the oldest in the town, was built in 1811. During the War of 1812, it purportedly served as a garrison for British officers. The long staircase window at the rear enabled the officers to keep watch on the enlisted men who lived in the barracks on the hill behind the house. And now, at, uh, as repeating Jerry's invitation, there is a reception inside. Uh, and we'd like you to join us for that. I'd like to thank you all for participating in our two plackings today. Um, and I would remind you that Rothsay House, just down the road, is holding an open house after this reception, and everyone who's interested is encouraged to visit. Thank you again.